Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about an important topic called Doppler effect. So, what do you mean by Doppler effect and when we are using this Doppler effect into consideration? The Doppler effect is nothing but if either source or observer is in motion, the resultant change in the sound wave is nothing but Doppler effect. So, how we can define this? So, Doppler effect is nothing but it is defined as if either source or observer is in motion, the resultant change in sound wave is nothing but Doppler effect. So this effect was introduced by Doppler who is an Austrian physicist. So he found this sound wave change like when either source or observer is in motion and the resultant change in the sound wave is nothing but Doppler effect. I will explain with an example. So consider a person, <coughs> consider a person standing in a railway station, standing in a railway station. So, so, so one person is stable and he is standing in a railway station one train is approaching the station and going away from the station okay this is the concept now when the train is approaching this is the train and take this train as source or source of the sound wave and he the person who is standing he is observer okay when the train continuously blows the horn and approaching the person he is he what what type of sound he will experience initially the sound wave is very less because the train is at the long distance when the train is approaching that person uh, slowly the sound wave increases like this slowly sound wave increases when train is approaching completely approached to this person he will be having the maximum sound and when train leaves the station and it is going forward direction that again the sound wave goes down decreases the change in this sound wave as the observer is listening from the source nothing but train this waveform this change is nothing but doppler effect doppler effect so initially we have minimum sound so that as the train approaching us we will be having <coughs> maximum sound again when the train is going away from the railway station the sound wave decreases so this change in the sound wave is nothing but doppler effect doppler effect at particular point only we will be having maximum sound similarly how this uh, effect can be used in the uh, radar systems to identify the moving objects is we are transmitting a signal with a frequency ft this is the transmitter signal frequency this waveform goes and touches the object which is in motion suppose if the object is a stationary object the resultant signal frequency is ft only if the object is not stationary and it is a moving object then the resultant frequency will be having a signal added with a plus or minus ft that means the change in that is nothing of d f d is nothing of d f d is nothing of d f d is nothing but doppler frequency doppler frequency so what is the amount of doppler frequency has been shifted in this we need to find out so with this uh, fd we can uh, calculate what is the amount of what is the amount of velocity with which the object is moving okay that is the main idea main uh, idea behind the consideration of doppler effect here okay so the transmitted signal frequency fd has been added or subtracted with the doppler frequency component fd if the object is motion understand if the object is in motion only then only we will be having the effect fd if the object is stationary we don't have this fd fd becomes zero for stationary object fd is equal to zero for stationary objects fd is equal to 0 for stationary objects and fd is equal to some value some value for moving targets for moving objects or targets 
okay suppose if the object is approaching then it is plus if the object is going away then it is minus system then from the radar system then it is minus okay now our purpose is to find out this fd okay fd what is the advantage if we find fd what is the advantage if we find fd if we find fd we can calculate we can calculate the relative velocity relative velocity with which the object is moving okay we can calculate the relative velocity with which the object is moving that means fd is proportional to relative velocity of the target vr now we should know the relation between these two we should know the relation between these two now our aim is to calculate what is the relation between fd and vr okay now our aim is to calculate the relation between these two okay consider a radar system consider a radar system and an object okay this is the object at a distance r okay consider a radar system and the object at a distance r now when we are transmitting a signal onto this object this waveform is having let us consider the waveform is having a wavelength of lambda the transmitted signal has a wavelength lambda okay how many number of wavelengths that occur between the radar system and the target what is the total distance that the wave has to take, uh, travel that the electromagnetic has to travel from radar system to the object and again from object to the radar system because it has to go in a round trip way so what is the total distance 2r so total distance traveled by the wave is equal to 2r let us consider n number of wavelengths n number of wavelengths occur between radar system and the object radar system and the object so n lambda is equal to 2r l lambda is equal to 2r so what is l lambda lambda is nothing but wavelength for a single cycle l lambda is nothing but total number of wavelengths between the distance r okay how many from in forward direction one r in backward direction 1r so total number of wavelengths between these distances is 2r uh, n, n lambda that is equal to 2r so n is equal to 2r by lambda n is equal to 2r by lambda now what we need to consider here we need to consider one parameter that is angular excursion angular excursion angular excursion phi angular excursion phi angular excursion phi made by electromagnetic wave during its transmission and from the target is 2 pi n it is given as phi is equal to 2 pi n so total angular excursion that is equal to 2 pi into what is n 2 r by lambda so that is equal to 4 pi r by lambda so what is phi phi is equal to angular excursion phi is equal to 4 pi r by lambda <coughs> so angular excursion from this from this angular excursion we can calculate the angular frequency angular frequency also we can calculate so what we have got we phi is equal to 4 pi r by lambda now angular frequency angular frequency omega d we know omega d that is equal to we can write it as 2 pi f d omega is equal to 2 pi f so angular frequency for the doppler frequency omega d that is equal to 2 pi f d d is nothing but doppler we can also write this as omega d is equal to also 
we can write omega d is equal to d phi by dt. Omega is equal to d phi by dt. So, rate of change of angular excursion is nothing but angular frequency. So, substitute what is phi, what we have already got in the previous case, 4 pi r by 4 pi r by lambda that is equal to now 4 pi is a constant lambda is a constant lambda is fixed when the operation of the radar system is started that is fixed because the transmitted signal frequency is constant 4 pi r by lambda what about the r r is changing if the object is motion if the object is in motion definitely r changes the distance is not constant always if the object is changing its position continuously definitely r also changes so, dr by dt, rate of change of distance, <coughs> rate of change of distance, so we can write it as, rate of change of distance is nothing but velocity, that is equal to 4 pi v r by lambda, that is omega d. So, what is omega d? Omega d is equal to 2 pi f d. So, therefore, 2 pi f d is equal to 4 pi v r by lambda. So, 4 pi 2 pi that is cancelled f d is equal to 2 v r by lambda. This is the relation between the Doppler frequency f d and the relative velocity of the target v r okay which is very 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 important which is very important in the fmcw radar and cw radar especially this concept is helping us in cw radar in fmcw radar we will calculate again one more formula okay thank you